What's going on today, guys? We're coming at you with another Let's Argue video. We pick a topic, we present our case, you argue with us down below. Last time, not that many of you argued, though. There's like two or three upvoted comments. And we don't really always pick either. You guys get to pick down below if you leave a comment and we can do that video. What should we argue about next? Last time we talked about carbs versus net carbs. Mm -hmm. Which one should you count? We said you should count net carb. No one really presented a solid argument. The top upvoted comment. I like something I heard Dr. Westman say about total carbs versus net carbs. Total carbs is like prescription strength keto and net carbs is like over the counter strength. I mean, Dr. Westman's great, but that's just like means nothing to me. Yeah, that means nothing to me either. It's just a methodology of counting. It's not like the diet is different, right? Right? right. Yeah. You're not like getting better pain management with to like total carbs versus net carbs. You can so, have equal success. I mean, you can eat the exact same day of eating and be counting differently. Right. And then would that magnify one day of eating up to prescription strength? I don't love the analogy, but I right. get what he's going for. On a serious weight loss journey, when you are obese and sick with diabetes, cancers, and other things, total carbs are best. And those ingredients are very important, at least for me. 134 pounds down and healed of 24 diseases. Whoa, that's amazing. That might be a record. Congrats yeah, on sure. all the progress. That's one angle we didn't really cover actually because you can't get away with as much like erythritol and stuff if you're doing total carbs. So I can get behind that. That's a good argument. Yeah, you're just limited to like the snacks you're consuming and the foods mm -hmm. maybe you're eating and that could just lead to better health outcomes. And if that's the case for you, then that makes sense for sure. Today, a topic I actually like, but I feel like I have trouble presenting my argument that well. Mm -hmm. It's you shouldn't eat salads. They suck. They're dumb. It's a waste of money almost zero nutrition. You're a dumb dumb if you're eating them. You're just falling into like the standard weight loss. Like this food's really low calorie and it fills me up. I need to eat it. So I'm a little up in the air. I'm not like so diehard. Salads are the worst thing ever. So maybe I'll play a little devil's advocate here. Okay. I'm pretty much on board with like salads aren't necessary by any means in your diet. So I spent the morning reading a lot about the history of lettuce. When did we start eating it? What do you guys think? Comment below. I'm about to tell you though. We started eating it about two to 3,000 years ago, the rest of human history. We got by without it. No one ate salads. Mm -hmm. And it was more of a delicacy, like in Roman times, the yeah. higher ups would eat it. I was just about to say, it's like a luxury food. And it would be like a garnish. It'd be like, here's, you know, some edible flowers and some wild arugula. Have this with your meat. I always go to this, but you'd never be strolling through the valley looking for some animals and you'd be like, oh, there's some, what's this type of lettuce? Romaine. There's a nice head of romaine over there. Let me just nibble on the leaves. These, this is delicious. You'd never do that. Cause it's like 50 calories. Why waste your time, right? Yeah, so to that point though, a little counter is that we've departed highly from that type of society, right? Like mm -hmm. our society now is filled with processed foods, on the go, fast food. So when you're comparing the things we're eating in majority, which is like fried fast foods, to what yes. people were eating back in the day, fresh baked sourdough, meat that they couldn't get all year round, things like that, then it's very different in terms of like, should we eat vegetables? Should we eat lettuce or not? Cutting out some McDonald's burger for my dad, adding in a salad, that's gonna be a lot more beneficial. Is it though? I would say so. What's on the salad? Well, you're not getting the processed oils that it's likely cooked in. You're not? 99% of salads have processed oils on them. Yeah, I'm talking just like the lettuce itself. If you're okay. using, without like the dressing and stuff, we're talking, I'm talking just like you're the You're talking base, just the lettuce. The base okay. of it, yeah. And then whatever toppings you add to it, yes, that could amount to a McDonald's cheeseburger. But we're, we're talking base, right? So yeah, if you wanna just talk about the lettuce, if we're talking about the entire salad, 99% of salads have vegetable oils on them in the sure. dressing. So those are bad, those are worse for you than McDonald's, hamburgers, all that stuff. It's pretty much the worst food you can eat. But we're talking the base. We're talking the actual, just the leaves. Yes. Should you be eating leaves? Yes. No. Nutrient profile, first off, what nutrients do you think you're getting from these leaves? There's nothing in there. There's Iceberg is just water. Iceberg is really bad, yeah. Like you could make arguments, kale, spinach. Right. Those have higher on paper nutrient counts, mm -hmm. but you, I was looking up like, why should you eat lettuce? I was trying to see the counterpoint. And it's like, it has 107% of your vitamin K you need for the day. But it's not vitamin K2, and it doesn't convert at a very high rate. There's also the fact that from pick to consumption, 
the vitamins are degrading. Mm -hmm. Like over 48 hours, what did I read? Spinach loses 90% of its vitamin C within 24 hours of harvest. So think of how long ago the spinach you're getting at the grocery store was harvested. And then how long it sits in your fridge before you actually eat it. And the thing is they cost so much money. Like spinach is like $3 for a little bushel full and it's like 50 calories. You can get a pound of ground beef for like $7 and that's over a thousand calories. To that point, okay. I'm gonna say that we should be under the assumption that we're getting most if not all of our nutrients, the vitamins and minerals from whole ingredient meats, right? Things like that, as opposed to just like, don't eat salads, assuming that you're getting all those nutrients. No, see, I, I'm of the impression salads are actively bad. It's not like oh, you could okay. have this and it's okay. Like you can have Twinkies and that's, also, like Twinkies and salads to me are like, you know, We're talking comparable. base, babe. You keep going back the to the whole, yeah. Okay, so the lettuce is not like that actively bad for you. It's just a waste of money and you don't really get much out of it. I mean, it could cause digestive issues. I think we'll tap, tap into that a little bit later, right? But yeah, like if you get the actual salad with the works, like the blue cheese dressing and all that, that's a Twinkie or worse. Or replace it with olive oil. Don't use that. Yeah, this then... It's not that That's bad. different. You got eggs. You can do put meat on it. There's so many ways to dress up a salad. I don't think it's like an absolute cut it from your life. You should never have it again. Again, I'm just, I'm countering what you're saying, okay. but I like what you're saying. Another thing is foodborne illness, which I don't really worry about. We're like so paranoid about this mm -hmm. in this day and age, like salmonella, all this stuff. It doesn't really even exist. Like it barely exists. No it one. It exists. It exists. But... It's a real thing, but like barely. But not in the extremes we, yeah. So. Yeah, and over 30% of these, the highest individual food that causes foodborne illness is leafy green vegetables. Mm -hmm. It's not raw not milk, raw cheese. Yeah. not raw cheese, none of these things. It's it's uh, spinach is number one. I think kale is number two. I don't know why. I think it's like maybe the surface area and like the, the how they handle it and stuff. Yeah. But that's the worst for foodborne illnesses. It's not all these things you're concerned about, like wash your hands after you cut chicken. You don't have to wash your hands after you cut chicken, guys. We do. We do. <laughs> but like maybe if you get it from Walmart, yeah, wash your hands. But like traditionally, if you just kill a chicken, you don't need to wash your hands. I'm of the Dwight Schrute mindset where you should have, instead of hand sanitizers outside of the bathroom, you should have little dirt stations where you just dip your hands in dirt and you build up your immune system. I mean, you just keep going back to traditional, 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 but you're talking like 3000 years ago. We are still living in traditional bodies. Same. Our environments are so exactly. far removed. So there is a case to be made. This is what some people might say. A big case. That you need all of these antioxidants, which we never used to eat. Like antioxidants are a newer, health food thing, like all these exotic berries and stuff because of all the environmental toxins. Mm -hmm. So you need antioxidants now. And, and then people would say you also need like the toxins in the vegetables as a form of hormesis, right? We talked to, uh, that too. what's his name? Your favorite guy? Tristan. No, other guy. Chris Masterjohn. Yes. And he talked about hormesis, which is a positive stressor. So acting yeah. as similar to a workout might, you know? So it's a negative stressor that is positive in the long run because your body adapts, which maybe with most of my research I was doing this morning, it was just like, when exactly did salads become a thing? And like, when do we start doing salads in like mass quantities? It was really the 1900s, but like salads, the way we see them today was probably 1700s with like dressings and stuff. It was never just like a big bowl of leafy green vegetables you had to have them growing like outside your window to do that because they go bad in like 48 hours after picking. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Someone said recently on like an Instagram live that they like to buy their produce from Aldi because it doesn't go bad as fast. And yeah. then Matt was like, it shouldn't go, it shouldn't stay fresh for that long in your fridge. <laughs> yeah. Salads used to be like root vegetables based and then like some garnishes mm -hmm. of leaves on top. Like at no point in history did we do this thing where we're just mashing as much leafy green vegetables into our body as possible. Like the green smoothies, salads, big salads. To no feel one, full off volume. Yeah, no one did that. Yeah, that's you very didn't... against our like instinct, right? To find nutrient dense foods. It makes sense in this day and age, you wanna feel full without over consuming calories. That's not the right way to do it though, because no, like that's not what your body's made for. Your body's made to feel full and nourished and fueled with as little volume as possible, which is gonna be animal fat, is the most mm -hmm. calorie dense foods you can get, mm -hmm. and nutrient dense. For me, I don't feel as good when I eat them. 
Um, I have a lot yes. of digestive distress. And that could be in part because I'm not used to eating them. So like if I went a month of eating salads, by the end of the month, I would be totally comfortable with salads. It'd be a day-to-day -day thing for me and I'd feel fine. But when I cut them out, I just feel better. So it's more about how I feel as opposed to like, does it have the nutrients I need? Is it really feeling? It's like, I don't feel great when I eat a big salad. I feel really good when I eat steak. So why wouldn't I choose the food that makes me feel best? I think most people can agree with that too though, right? Well, yeah, I mean, there's also Physically just- Physically versus mentally. Like mentally, yeah. if I ate a salad, I'm like, oh, well, I only ate like 300 calories because I opted for no dressing. Like I did minimal size. It like also is like a negative cycle of thinking, right? Like I want less food for more volume, yeah. but then mentally you feel, and physically you feel better if you just ate like meat in my opinion. There's also the intuitive test of like, d does romaine lettuce taste good? No, not really. So if I had to summarize my three reasons salads suck, they are extremely expensive when you calculate per calorie. They have no nutrients in them. You don't need anything that is in salads. Just the intuitive, like ancestral, you're never walking through a field and you're like, oh, there's some blueberries over there. I think that's like a sweet potato. There's a deer I could kill. Let me just gobble down that lettuce. That's just sort of the, the check. Like this is a new thing we're doing. We're doing a lot of new things now, right? I think doing the old things that we've always done is better until proven otherwise. Those are all fair points, but I just think as opposed to like cutting them out entirely, if they're something you enjoy, because like once in a while we go out to eat, right? We like to split a Caesar salad with our ribeyes, right? We each get. So my point is like time to time, it, I think they are definitely fine to consume, maybe yeah. even delicious, maybe even make your meal a lot better, but like, are they necessary? No, as Matt said, the nutrition is, is non-existent. And then what you're topping it with the, the vegetable oils. And then like, I mean, a lot of people are doing croutons and just like, you know, things that aren't, are also very devoid of nutrition. Yeah. If you're not doing the toppings and the dressing, the salad isn't actively killing you. It's right. probably just a waste of money. That's it. Let's, let's argue. Do you guys like this segment? Should we keep doing it? I think when we do this segment, I want to just present a strong opinion and not, cause like most of the time we're like kind of middle of the road. Like you could do this, you could do well, that. Well, you're pretty strong about this one. Yeah. I'm middle of the road. Yeah. And I wasn't going to like pretend I was very strong against what I feel. Comment below, why are salads the bomb?